are going to begin BMS session. Now, we are going to invite the executive director Kim Barron and followed by uh, Kim Hyoro. And first, we are going to invite uh, Kim Barron, director Kim. Hello, I don't know if you can hear me well. Okay, I can hear the tr translation. I am Kim Barun from BMS. No, I'm the governmental affairs and PR department. I'm very delighted to have this opportunity to talk about uh, Bristol Myers Squibb to everyone. I'm thankful to be given this opportunity and I'm honored. Today um, uh, is the second day of uh, the conference, and I think this is the last session, uh, being Friday and it's rainy outside. So it's slow afternoon uh, as a final session. I'm going to try my best to wake, keep you awake, and I'll do my best. Uh, in the previous session, so you have heard explanation from other uh, prominent pharmaceuticals and uh, Today, um, instead of focusing on differentiation, how we are different from other pharmaceuticals, we're going to talk about uh, PMS, uh, who we are, and what our pipeline contains, and what innovation we, we seek. So I'm going to present and along with uh, Mr. Kim Yono. So instead of a uh, typical uh, company introduction, I'm going to show you this photograph. Uh, can you guess what this is? So I was, as I was uh, preparing for this presentation in the morning, I was watching uh, Star Wars, the movie, and I thought of this a, a Star Wars related episode and I wanted to share. So many of you are developing business on the keyword of innovation. Although it is not a pharmaceutical industry uh, area where innovation and science is um, prioritized, you will be interested in anything. So this uh, photograph is from uh, the first episode of uh, Star Wars uh, from 1977. It used a technique called chroma key. Uh, it didn't have any co uh, computer graphics back then. Uh, so they used a specific technique for this uh, visual effects. So um, by glancing at it, uh, you might think this preparation was quite flimsy. Uh, but George Lucas, uh, the gigantic figure in the film industry, had a small visual effect or special effect company. And that uh, company played an instrumental role in bringing Star Wars to life. And I, that's called ILM. And that company was uh, giant in the visual effect uh, realm. In the 80s, uh, George Lucas got, got a divorce uh, and he had to pay alimony and he sold part of the company at $10 million and the buyer was Steven Jobs uh, and Pixar grew out of uh, that uh, acquisition. So in 2000, it was acquired by Walt Disney, a Disney company, and uh, the rest is history. And why I am showing this uh, photograph, you might be wondering. So the beginning was small, but uh, it led to Walt Disney and Pixar. Uh, and pharmaceutical industry is not that different from this. Uh, it has... Uh, be, I'm, I want to emphasize BMS can engender that kind of partnership and giants in the industry with the partnership. Um, of course, for science, for medical science, uh, we are working just like other pharmaceutical companies to change patients' lives. And this is our uh, CEO, Giovanni Caforio. Uh, it's, he's from Italy. Uh, I put it on a big picture so that you can memorize his face. Uh, he is a medical doctor by 
training. Uh, he grew uh, BMS a lot. And so what we are focusing on, the internal and external innovation he mentioned here. Internal innovation is what we have to work on. Of course, today I'm going to uh, talk about external innovation that can be made with you. And going through the slides, I'm going to share with you uh, why uh, external innovation is important, why our CEO uh, attached great importance to that. Some of you might not know relatively uh, that well about BMS. Uh, there are big farmers. Maybe you have heard of us uh, once or twice. So this shows uh, the history of the company. And this also evidences how uh, great uh, we can be as a partner to you. Those other companies might be uh, similar, but as you can tell from the acronym BMS, uh, we are composed of Bristol Myers and Squibb. We started with a uh, Squibb in 1858. It was late Joseon Dynasty time period. The in the U.S., Minnesota was incorporated into the United States as a 30. Second uh, state, and the war was on in the United States. The civil war was uh, on, and morphine-related products were provided by Squibb. Uh, and then. Uh, in ni 1940s, uh, Bristol was acquired, and in 1986, Bristol Myers Squibb came into being. As you can see, uh, we had numerous mergers and acquisitions. For your information, uh, from farmers in Korea usually have uh, the same name as uh, when they were established. But many overseas farmers have oftentimes acronyms as their names because of acquisitions and mergers they went through. As you can see, these uh, MNAs are also a product of innovation. Uh, there are also notable news uh, recently announced so in 2019. We acquired Selgin, a biopharma company, and the price tag for Selgin was almost $74 billion. And we also acquired another company at uh, $13 billion. So we invested uh, almost $90 billion. Uh, so it's a enormous amount of fund that you put, we put in for mergers and acquisitions. So the Korean office was established in 1997. We have more than 200 uh, employees currently. And R&D investment at the global level is $5.1 billion. And uh, the currently, uh, we are on the growth trajectory. Probably BMS became uh, famous and imprinted in you in 2018. Though, as you know, we do have two uh, immuno-oncology therapies, uh, and the foundation was built by two uh, medical doctors, and they uh, received uh, Nobel Physiology uh, Award. Just like uh, you're tooling to uh, build new innovation, new scientific grounds, uh, these two uh, scientists pioneered uh, cancer immunotherapy. And we also have a related video that covers how Dr. James Ellison uh, pioneered cancer immunotherapy. Uh, these are also symbolic uh, event uh, in the history of BMS innovation. So what kind of activities are, are we engaged in? This is an uh, area of biggest interest of you. We have five key R&D area. So 
hematologic malignancy, CVD, and other immuno, immune uh, disease. So on your left, uh, you can see a lot of, uh, you can see that a lot of uh, research is in pipeline. And I want to draw your attention to the number 60%. Uh, so 60% of the pipeline uh, stemmed from external partnership. And in 2020, uh, our R&D scale was uh, number four, top four in the world, and our revenue was uh, top five and top seven uh, in the world. And we are going into, indeed, a big pharma. So going into details a bit, we do have uh, we cover therapeutic areas of solid tumor and hematologic uh, malignancy. And we also have the world's number one CVD therapy. And we also are active in other TAs. And when you list up uh, best selling 20 uh, drugs, uh, our drugs are ranked at third and fourth and eighth. So three of uh, ours is in top 10. And uh, you can see early stage pipeline. So we have 18 in solid tumor, 10 in hematologic oncology, and so five, eight, four. So uh, early stage pipeline is really robust. So this slide gives you more information about different uh, TAs that we uh, focus on. So solid tumor uh, is the topic for this slide. Of course, I cannot really go through all the compounds and active ingredients. But in solid tumor, uh, there are 20, 15 out of uh, 24 solid tumor compounds or, or AI are from external partnership. So from early on, we are really actively engaging in open innovation. In hematology, uh, our, our activity is even more brisk. Uh, 18 out of 22 stemmed from open innovation. Uh, and those that are in phase one, uh, eight out of nine is from open innovation. So I think uh, trend is the similar, the platform is more or less the same uh, in cardiovascular and neuroscience and immunology. So the zest here is that we are very actively engaging in open innovation and external partnership. Also, uh, digital health is also part of our uh, cross therapeutic areas of focus. So how do we pursue uh, open innovation? And how we're going to communicate with you when we collaborate with you. Uh, for many companies, the strategy for open innovation might be similar, uh, but we have identified nine key areas or nine key topics. And relatively, our uh, areas of interest is quite broad. So we are seeking partnership in very diverse uh, topics. So first, of course, uh, our, the interest of partner company and ours should uh, coincide and be well aligned. And we want to build a partnership that can last for a long time, not just at the BMS uh, Korea level, but also uh, at the global level, open innovation uh, is managed and operated. So you'll be given a chance to collaborate with global uh, stakeholders, and we will serve uh, as a bridge for that. And for open innovation, we have comprised a special team, and key talents are put on to that team. So they will be talking to you, and they will serve as a communication channel for you, uh, because open innovation is spearheaded by uh, global uh, HQ. So these uh, open innovation team will be there for you to support that communication. 
the, the team in Korea is called Koen, Korea Open Innovation. Uh, Japan join. Uh, you might guess what acronym that stands for. Uh, so we are just not. We are not just staying in the local area. The cluster is expanded to include East Asia. That also heightens the interest level or attention level we get from HQ. Since 2019. Uh, at the headquarters level, we have signed CDA with a total of six companies. And of course, the numbers will grow uh, going forward. So, in the same vein, for open innovation, uh, we also need to uh, raise the profile of BMS as a company. Uh, so that the strategy and the research area can be better known uh, to the potential um, candidate partners. So we are taking part in different events and different symposiums, and uh, we are also uh, providing different support, different support through lecture and one-on-one -on -one mentoring. And the reason why uh, we are presenting today is, is that it's because of the collaboration we have with uh, Seoul Biohub. And we are about to sign MOU with Seoul Biohub. And we will probably be with uh, Seoul partner Biohub going forward in a long term partnership. And we'll also uh, we'll gain uh, support from the government or other hubs to expand our potential collaboration with you. So these companies are quite well known to you. Uh, so we try to drop some names of big enterprises. This is CMO and CDMO, uh, areas of open innovation. So as we can see from uh, COVID-19 um, response uh, strategy, Korean companies need to collaborate with global uh, companies. So we joined our hands with Zeltrion and Samsung Biologics. Nowadays, uh, they're very global and uh, in international. But in the beginning, uh, the concept itself of CMO was not well established. But even then, uh, BMS uh, started collaboration with these uh, companies. The first CMO product. Uh, that made Celtrion what it is now uh, is BMS rheumatoid arthritis uh, treatment. We have also cancer uh, immunotherapy products, and some of them are being produced by uh, Samsung Biologics, and they are exported to other markets. And the agreement still stands now, and many uh, foreign investment companies contributed to the growth of these household name companies in Korea, and BMS is proud to be part of that. And likewise, you, a startup company from Korea, can grow uh, into a enormous international global company uh, with the help of different pharma companies or global uh, companies. So I cited uh, examples of Samsung Biologics and Celtrion. Before giving the floor to Kim, Mr. Kim hyun uh, I just want to point out that our team for business development or open innovation team is really well built and re it's really easy to contact them. Uh, if you have great idea, uh, we'll be there to contact you. So uh, we, ha we are showing you two email addresses for Korea contact. So please do uh, come into contact with them so that we can develop your conversation into a brighter business uh, partnership. So after forging a business partnership, uh, we will be able to meet each other uh, and we'll have more uh, exchanges. And I'm hopeful that we can uh, bear the fruits of more uh, productive partnership.
So I want to leave you with a quote from uh, our EVP, Elizabeth Milley. We're open to a wide range of partnership opportunities, focusing on innovative medicines, and we are committed to being a leading uh, biopharma partner, and uh, we'll do our best to make this happen. And uh, future pipeline will be explained to you by uh, Mr. Kim Hyono. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm at BMS. I'm, I'm in charge of medical. My name is Kim Hyono. First and foremost, I'd like to thank the organization committee to invite me. I'm going to share our strategies with you. Uh, let me correct one thing. In the previous presentation, 55, uh, 45 clinical trials, 45 clinical trials, but rather than that, like thousands of clinical trials are underway. And he said that we are in the nine therapeutic areas. This is the kind of scope of the PD, but as for the IND, it's a bit different from what is said. But today I'm going to share what we have. In the pipeline. To be more specific, at a high level, we are going to talk about the R&D. What kind of R&D strategies that we have? So at BMS, we try to identify innovative medicines and bring them to our patients. So we try to discover and develop new medicines for patients. We are focusing on the critical illnesses or critical indications. And this shows you the BMS, the area of our interest is shown here. The so first column shows you the disease areas that we are focusing on as of today. As you see, solid tumor oncology we have uh, nivolumab and ipilimumab. And in hematology, we have uh, different medications for the multiple myeloma. So that's the indications that we are focusing on and develop the product for that. For the CV, cardiovascular indication, we have Saban. And in immunology, we have and in the late stage pipeline, we have nine of them. They will be launched in the future, in the near future. Within three years, the new drugs will be launched into the market. As explained before, we have phase one and two clinical trials and more than 50 of them are in the early stage of development of a clinical trial. So when we have a look at the platform, we have chemicals and biologics and cell therapies. And I'm going to talk about those different areas one by one later on. Sorry that it keeps going to the next pages, even though I didn't click. Recently, we have achieved this in terms of R&D. New medicines were developed and indications are expanded. So we have got 13 approvers last year and eight phase three trials were underway and we got the result and six registrations was launched and more than 50 are in the pipeline and they will be developed and fully developed within three years. 
Sales therapy draws a lot of attention, and U.S. FDA received our filing and five new indications added to our immuno-oncology product line. Let me show you what areas that we are focusing in R&D. Science, as a science company, I believe that science will provide us with answers to the most difficult questions that we have. We are going through the area where the breakthrough achievement and development are made every day, and BMS is focusing on the areas where the science is required most. So when it comes to oncology area, we are focusing on these fields. First, immunology, therapy, immune checkpoint. Univita is the development or product that we have developed as a pioneer. And multiple sclerosis is another area. And we are going to expand the oncologies expand our product lines to cover different oncologies. And we have uh, accumulated a, a huge amount of data on the oncology. We got the FDA approval for the immune checkpoint inhibitor and CAR T therapy and protein degrader. And we are the only company that have the, those three type of uh, treatment and therapies. And based on the rich experience of our R&D, we are able to present a, our vision and also understand the response of our patient. And let me talk about the pipeline. We have a very deep and broad pipeline. And these are the indications that we were working, working on. So in oncology, in hematology and cardiovascular and immunology and fibro diseases and neuroscience and recently COVID-19 are the areas we are diving into. As you see here, we have a different type of cancers and heart failure, fibrosis, and you can understand the indications or diseases that we are interested in. And this shows you the current portfolio of BMS. And as I mentioned, more than 50 is in pipeline, but this list is not exhaustive. But as you see here, these are the ones which are in the phase one and two or three clinical trials. Uh, Director Kim talked about the business development and it's a driver for the future growth and this is an area that we apply top priority. We try to diversify our pipeline and also we want to try to find the partners for external innovation. Starting from the discovery and down to the launch, we want to find the partners. As you see here, this is the basis for our R&D activities. This is the last slide of mine. Our CEO, Giovanni Caforio, as for the researchers, we under complicated our critical illnesses are and try to find answers to that. We have the rich experience and through the collaboration, we try to find answers to the most difficult diseases so that we can improve the quality of life and make differences for the changes. Thank you. If you have uh, any questions, uh, you can use the contact information that we've shown you, or you can also contact the Biohub uh, or the Conference Secretariat to reach us. Uh, we, I'm hopeful that we can have conversation on the potential partnership.
Yes, with this, uh, we're going to conclude a global, global open collaboration sessions. Uh, I believe you have uh, gotten a lot of inspiration from this session. I'm really hopeful that we'll be able to have this in uh, person next year. Next year, we're also running a satisfaction survey on YouTube. Please take part in that survey. Thank you very much for your participation. Goodbye.